Do you know how many possible moves White has for the starting of the position? If your answer is 20, you are right. I'm Katy, and in this video I'm gonna show you every first move ranked from the worst to the best. Let's break it down. We do have 8 pawns. Each of these pawns can make 1 or 2 moves. In total, 16 moves. Besides that, we have 2 knights, and those knights can make 4 moves. That's how we got 20 first moves. Guys, it is very important to choose right opening and the correct first moves. For that, we have some of the basic rules in chess. Let me show that. This is the center of the board. We would like to control the center, so our first rule is to control the center by the pawns. Second rule is to develop the minor pieces towards the center. And the third rule is to keep the king safe. For that, you need to castle short side or long side. That sounds so easy and so simple, right? Let's now put this into the practice. We have categorized all these 20 moves and our first category is never, never do this. And the move F3. Well, you can make this move if you want to demonstrate the shortest checkmate in chess. After E5, you can make G4 a horrible move. Queen H4 is a checkmate. Other than that, F3 is not the move that I would like to recommend to you because it weakens the king and it's not worth it to play. Another move which fits this category is A4. It is really far from the center and perhaps the idea is to develop the rook on the second move. Black goes against that, plays D5 and after rook A3 captures this rook and wins the game. So it's not worthy. How about if we try on the other side of the board with H4? The same thing can happen, rook h3, bishop h3, thank you very much, this is very bad start of a game. How about if we play a little bit safe, h3. This move can be very useful in some of the positions to avoid bishop g4 or knight f6, knight g4, but this is just start of the game, we don't really need to play such a passive moves. Our next category is when the knights are making a wrong turn, knight a3, and knight h3. Those moves are developing moves, but not the right moves. We would like to develop the knights towards the center, not at the edge of the board, because those knights at the edge of the boards are very limited. Knight a3 is called a sodium attack. N and A are standing for a chemical terms. It is known that if you're using too much of the sodium, your blood pressure goes up. Knight a3 also has the same effect, so it is not recommended to play too much of this move. How about knight h3? This opening is called Amano opening and has been played by many green masters, including Magnus Carlsen. He has played this move in 2008 against Drev. He has won this game, but he has never played ever since, so it can be a hint for us. The idea of the move is to play f3, knight f2, develop the light square bishop, castle and to continue to play on the king side. Or you can play g3, fianchetto the bishop, castle, bring the knight on f4. That's possible, you can give a try. If you really wanted to play with black pieces but they gave you white pieces, then this is for you and our next category is a pass move. And this is a3. So basically, you just pass the turn to black to choose the opening. This move is very popular and has been played by Hikaru Nakamura, Magnus Carlsen, Daniel Dubov and many more. It's quite interesting. The name of this opening is Anderson's opening because it has been played by Adolf Anderson against Paul Morphy and he won with 1A3. Our next category is mouse leaps and those moves are E3, D3 and C3 a bit far from the center and quite passive moves. In fact, e3 has the most difficult name. I'm gonna give a try to say it out of loud. It is called one at quiz. If we have someone who speaks Dutch, please correct me if I'm wrong or let me know if I'm anywhere close. So the idea of this move is to uh, get the center later on, maybe d4, maybe c4, maybe we would like to build up the stone wall with f4, d4 and c3. So basically you are not really closing here the light square bishop, you are not avoiding knight f3 next move and it is playable, but a little bit passive. Another move is d3. 
the same idea, you're not fighting for the center, but later on you can play c4, you can play e4, you can also get knight here, fianchetto bishop and play king's attack, color reversed. In fact, this move has been played by a former world champion, Garry Kasparov, against Deep Blue in the game 3. Garry Kasparov decided not to go to the main lines and confuse the artificial intelligence with 1d3. It really worked out and the game has been ended in a draw in 48 moves. Our next move in this category is c3. Well, this is named Saragossa opening and it is a kind of waiting move. So let's say black plays d5 or knight f6, you can play d4 and next bishop f4, e3 and this is London system. Some of you might like it very much and would like to play, so go ahead and try it. If your opponent plays c5 and you go e4 here to control the center, this is the Sicilian defense with c3, it is called Alapin variation. Very sharp, white is trying to get the center, next move with d4 and it is totally playable. Moving forward to the next category, and this is the category maybe don't, and the move 1g4. This move is also in the edge of the board, not fighting for the center, but it is very tricky. Black usually responds with d5 after bishop g2, white is sacrificing a pawn. If black takes this pawn, white goes with c4, it creates a lot of danger on the diagonal, also queen gets on b3, to annoy the pawn on b7, it is really, really sharp. However, g4 is not fighting for the center, as I mentioned. Black can simply just develop the pieces, for instance, c6 here, to go against the light square bishop. Black is the one who controls the center, white is the one who controls the king side, but it is maybe too early to control the king side. Black can later on just respond with h5 to annoy the white pawn. Now moving to next move, and this is the move I'm sure many of you like to see. f4 called bird's opening. If you are a player who likes sharp positions, who likes to attack the opponent's king, go for it. f4 on the other hand is a bit dangerous because you are also weakening your king, you need to be very careful with that. You can play knight f3, then develop the light square bishop castle and your pawn is already on f4, be ready to be pushed all the way to f5 and f6 to attack the king. Well, you can try. Going to the next moves, knight to c3. This is a sound move, but it's not so great as the other moves that I'm going to show you. The idea of the knight c3 is to control the center with a knight and also to develop the knight. Black usually responds here with d5 or knight f6, so let's see what happens after d5. You can play d4 and bishop to f4 and it transposes to Jobava London, which is very popular these days. It has a sharp character and it's possible to play. Now we're going to take a look if b pawn goes forward, b4 or b3. b4 has two names. It is Polish opening or orangutan opening. The idea of this move is to develop the dark square bishop and to attack on g7. It is very sharp, also controls the c5 square and it has its own ideas. I think it is totally worth the try. On the other hand, b3 is more peaceful. The idea is the same, to play bishop to b2, to attack the g7 pawn in the long term, to attack on the king side. These days it is very popular to play 1b3 in the blitz games because it has a sharp character, there's a lot of tactics there and also it avoids the main theoretical lines. Now we are moving to the category where we have selected all the good moves, starting with 1g3. The idea of this move is to develop the king side first, keep this king at the safety and then to fight for the center. Let me put some of the moves on the board. We have now castled, our king is safe, we fight for the center and here we have a setup of Catalan defense which is very popular nowadays and it has quite sharp character. Another very popular move is 1c4, known as English opening. White is controlling d5 square and wants to play knight c3, next move. Well, black usually responds with e5 and here we have this setup where white can choose to play in the center with d4 
or after developing the king side to play f4 and to go after the king or to play rook to b1 and b4 to play on the queen side. So this opening is very flexible and you can choose the plan on the board. And the last move in this category is knight f3, known as ratty opening. It's also one of my favorite openings because it really goes well to my name, Katty and Ratty. And I like to play it for some reason. Well, for me, this is a backup opening because I'm a d4 player. And if you're a d4 player, then you are comfortable to play knight f3 as well. It is very flexible. You can play here d4 as I usually do. You can play c4, you can play g3, you can play b3, you can play e3. It is really, really flexible. So you can actually try to play this move as well. And here we are in the final category where we have the best moves. 1e4, which says I'm the best, and 1d4, which says no, I'm the best. The most common question in chess is e4 or d4. Here we are to answer this question. Well, they are both equally strong because they are attacking the center right away. Another common thing between these two moves is that you need to know a lot of theory if you play 1e4 or 1d4. Let's go with e4. This move is the most played among the chess players according to the database. King's Pawn is really good opening for the beginners because it gives you a lot of possibilities for traps and it is a good tool to attack your opponent's king. Let's see the possible openings from black side. You should be ready for 1e5 or to c5. This is a Sicilian defense. Also, it's quite popular to see move c6, Karakan defense. There is another move e6, French defense. Knight f6 is also a possibility, or knight to c6, or there's also a way to respond with d6, or g6, or b6. A lot of theory. Let's now go to d4. This is more solid setup, and it offers you a positional struggles. After d4, now black can respond with d5. This is the most common move, and knight to f6 to control the center. There are moves like c5 to challenge the center right away or e5 with the same idea. There are waiting moves too like d6, c6 or e6, also g6. The one of the sharpest line is to play f5, which is called Dutch defense. That's it guys for today. I hope you liked this video. Please make sure you like the channel and press the bell button to see the similar content. I'm Woman Grandmaster Katie Tazalashvili and I'll see you in the next video.